hello hello welcome to my live stream today my name is victoria rose i am coming to you live from ula izmir in turkey have you ever had a turkish bath today i want to share with you my experience <laughs> and hopefully you share yours too So yesterday, Australia Day, I went and had my very, very first ever Turkish bath. What I can say is that Turkish bath, a hammam, was an incredible experience, one that I've never, ever had before. But before I go there, I want to heart you. I'm an Aussie traveling around the world, whichever parts of the world that I can get to. And I can tell you right now that one of the things most missing from many places is heart. People operating from their hearts. And I can also say that Turkish people have been the ones so far on this trip who have operated mostly from that space. But let's talk about my experience. So have you, you ever, ever had a Turkish bath? Today, I'd like to talk to you and make three points. Surprise, surprise. It's always three points. And the first point is about culture. The second point is about the experience itself. And the third point well, the third point is going to be about the costs and what people are saying here and in my travels around me as a solo traveler, traveling around the world the way I am. So let's have a look at my first point, which is culture. Even as an 18-year-old jumping or going up that gangplank to the ship on my ocean voyage to the UK, I never ever wanted to go where all the Aussies were going at that time and probably still do, which was Earl's Court, dubbed Kangaroo Court. No, 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 even as an 18-year-old, I wanted to be where the natives of the land would be. I wanted to experience what they experience in their life. Now, I can tell you it was quite a cultural shock in the UK, but that's another live stream. Same goes with what I'm doing in my travels now. Sure, there's a time and a place for the luxurious resorts and the cruise ships. My intention is still to understand the different cultures of other countries, other places. And once I understand that, it can give me an insight into us as humans, as humanity, because we are all operating as per our culture's requirements. What I'd like to see is where do we all meet in our cultural requirements? Where are we all joined as one as humanity? And so far, the place that I've seen that seems to really meet that requirement is when we operate from our heart. So here I am, I'm on a work away experience with an amazing, amazing Turkish woman. And she took me to my uh, first Turkish bath just yesterday. Now, <laughs> I can say to you that if I'd have been looking on my own, I would have walked right by this place because it certainly didn't have the look of what I imagined in my mind would be a Turkish bath. But we uh, pulled up, I got out of the car, walked across the bridge. We've had a heap of rain here, interesting weather we're having in Turkey this winter. And there I stood waiting for my workaway host 
to come and join me after she parked the car. And I watched these women as they walked over the bridge to go into the Turkish bath. And there they are, all dressed up with their scarves on and, and their long sort of from neck to knee, uh, sorry, neck down to toes, all of their gear. And so I walked into the Turkish bath and area and prepared myself and then walked into the first part, which is walking into this steaming, steaming room. And it's winter here, so it was really nice to walk into that steaming room. And the idea is, that I didn't know this, so the idea is that you sit down on the bench and in the centre of this room is a big square block. And I wasn't quite sure what this square block was for, but I was about to find out. So here I am sitting on around the rim of the room where there are taps, hot and cold water, and little basins. And the idea is that you use the container you're provided with, and what you need to do is just sit there and just splash the lovely hot water, a warm, whatever temperature you like, over yourself. And you just kept doing this. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, is this it? <laughs> is this what I'm, why am I doing this? Just sitting here. Yes, it's nice. Just sitting here doing this. Then uh, the women uh, came in, some of the other women, those ones that I had seen covered really from the top of their head down to their toes, except for this bit with their clothing. And when we are unclothed, as it were. Uh, yes, it's interesting to see uh, people, men and women, like that. It's like we are now as one because we have nothing uh, that we have donned, uh, no masks, no coverings that we have donned to hide who we really are. Ah, so we sat down, they, they sat down and everyone was pouring the water over self and then I saw what that square block was for. So now we're going to go into point two, which is the experience. So point one was I really wanted to say how important culture is for me. Now, I could have gone to a really upmarket hammam, no doubt, I waited until I got to Istanbul, and I really, as I mentioned, have this driving force to be the only, uh, sorry, to be in uh, a an environment that is natural to the people that live there. So I've caught a lot of the local transport, their minibuses, and here I am in a local's Turkish bath, hammam. So what was the experience like? Point two, the experience. Then I saw why we needed to keep point, uh, putting this water over us. It is to soften our skin for what's to come next. <laughs> and then it's my turn. So I get up and lie on this square block in the middle of this steam bath and this woman with this mitt, this abrasive mitt, high-grade sandpaper, I reckon, proceeded to scrape virtually every inch of my body within an inch of my life. And I'm there going, this is good. <laughs> Actually, my host told me later that she had asked my woman to not be so hard on me, to not hurt me. I'm glad she said that. <laughs> so here I am and I'm having this sandpaper all over my body, all over it, oh, the inner thighs, everywhere. And do you know what I noticed? Because it's pretty hard to not see it. Uh, these incredible cigar-shaped blobs of dry skin that were just rolled up and a whole heap of them had come away, had been sloughed away from my body. And I went, oh my gosh, do you know for a decade in my shower at home in Australia, 
my hot shower. I've always had a loofah. Have I used it? I've attempted to use it a couple of times, but I've never actually really kept it up. Well, <laughs> so there I am with all of this cigar rolls of shaped rolls of skin, dead skin that have been just stripped from my body. That's then washed away. And you're there thinking, well, I'm still alive. <laughs> you know, I had this feeling that the age that I am, so I'm in my 69th year, and I've noticed how thin my skin has become. I used to have really beautiful skin once. And what I mean by beautiful, uh, what I meant was that I like an olive uh, skin, and uh, therefore it was never dry. From about the age of 63, I've noticed how dry and thin my skin has become. And that's one of the reasons why I never use this loofah. I thought, aren't I doing harm to my skin? Well, yesterday, on Australia Day, it proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that doing that to your skin is good for you. I knew intellectually it was good for, for me. I'd heard it so many times, but actually doing it. <laughs> so I'm sitting now putting back to putting the warm water over my body. And then it's time for the massage. So for the massage, you get back on the square block in the center of the room. By now, there are about eight other women that had come into the Turkish bath and they were in various processes of having the uh, loofah or the mitt, the sandpaper mitt, high grade sandpaper mitt, <laughs> rubbed over their body. I mean, almost, almost every square inch of your body and or they were splashing the water and there was even this adorable little girl. She was one year old and this was her first time in the hammam, in the Turkish bath. And she was just adorable. She was, her mum was looking after her and preparing her for what needs to happen with her and for her as a woman in this culture, a young woman. Now it's my turn for the massage. Now we're still in point two, which is the experience. So I had this amazing oil uh, still in the heat, still in the steam, and this woman uh, then proceeded to uh, now release the tension and any aches and pains. Now, I normally have a massage every three weeks, and since I've been travelling, this is only my second massage. So I've been travelling now for four, almost five months, so... It was such bliss to lie there in this warmth and have this beautiful smelling uh, cream oil rubbed in, uh, working on my feet, working on my hands. It was just fabulous. Now, all this took around two hours. So first of all, point number one was about the culture. Point number two was about the actual experience. The experience was good. It would have been a very different experience if I paid a lot more money and gone to a really upmarket hammam. As I explained to you with point one, though, anyone can do that. And is it a valid experience? I've already explained to you how important culture is to me. So that brings me to point three, which is the cost. So what was the cost? So for two hours of being warm, of uh, health, uh, having healthy things, the experience being one of looking after myself and being pampered in Australian dollars, that cost me just over 10 Australian dollars. So here's the interesting thing. Thing. Since I've been traveling, I've kept a meticulous account of what stuff costs me as I'm traveling around. This has been really, really good for me in a number of ways. And again, that'll be another live stream on that when I'm in the next country that I'm going to visit. So 
here I am looking like <laughs> I must be rich. I'm, you must be wealthy. I've been asked that in Italy. I've been uh, told that in Croatia. You must be a wealthy woman to be doing what you're doing. And here in Turkey as well. Why do they think that? Because for them to travel like I am, well, it's virtually impossible for most of them. So many people, especially here in Turkey, have the dream of coming to Australia, the land of milk and honey, my beloved sunburnt country. Well, there's a problem that I foresee that they have something that they have here that will be very difficult for them to have in Australia. And I'm going to leave that for another live stream. Cost. 10 Australian dollars. How much do you think that would cost if you could even get it in Australia? Well, I happen to know that for a one hour massage, you're paying minimum 80 Australian dollars, minimum, and often paying 120, 150 Australian dollars. So cost, you can live so much more economically here when you're traveling depending on your choice you can go to the resort places uh, and perhaps not get a, a real experience one that's been trumped up for you as tourists to actually uh, enjoy uh, based on what people know of your tastes or you can decide i want to see what it's like for the people that live in this country, for the women that live in this country, because each hammam is for women and then they have their own one for men, which is right and proper. <laughs> My name is Victoria Rose. I am traveling around Europe. I'm currently in Turkey. I'm moving on the 1st of February to my next country. I am often asked three questions. These are the three most asked questions by the people that are following me, wherever they live, mostly in Australia, but I've got British people, I've got Americans, I've got people from all areas around the world who contact me privately and want to know, they ask me these questions and they want to know the answer. So I will do, my next live stream will be on those three questions. My message to you today is travel. If it's in your heart to see the world, don't be fearful of what you see on the television. Don't be fearful of those rumors, the gossip that spread around. I have felt safer in Italy in Croatia and absolutely here in Turkey than what I have felt in Australia in my own country. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today. Victoria Rose Travel with Victoria Rose, absolutely over 60 and life is still fabulous because and only because you at this age have the courage, you're open enough, you're bold enough to be you. No matter how crazy you are, no matter how over the top you seem to be, it's okay. You are brave enough to be you. And you're not broken. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you next week. I'm leaving on Monday for Istanbul. I can't wait. How exciting. Istanbul. <laughs> Bye.